Hey, this is Fletch, Chief Architect for Worldwide Public Safety Solutions at Avaya, and welcome to this presentation, Kerry's Law for MLTS in Texas, what was passed and how it affects your PBX. On December 1st of 2013, Carrie Hunt died because of a single digit. She had met her estranged husband in a Marshall, Texas hotel for visitation with their three children. When she entered the room, she was murdered by her ex-husband, who brutally stabbed her 31 times. Her nine-year-old daughter, who was only a few feet away, desperately tried to call 911 four separate times. Unfortunately, she was never able to reach them. Now, had she gotten through, Carrie may be alive today. And I'm sure most of you know why the calls failed, and that was because you needed to dial 9911 from that hotel room. This presentation comes with a little bit of homework. I'd like you to go out and read about Carrie's Law and the petition that Hank Hunt, her father, started. If you agree, join the nearly half million others who've signed the petition. If you don't, well, you can pass it on. You can find that petition at change.org forward slash Carrie's Law, or you can check out the landing page at no9needed.com. Private network access to public safety is a problem everywhere. Even in the Federal Communications Headquarters, we learned from Commissioner Ajit Pai and Commissioner Mike O'Reilly that 911 can't be dialed on their own phone system. If you try, you get a recording that says, Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please consult your directory and call again. This is a recording. Fortunately, FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler and Commissioner Ajit Pai have announced that their MLTS will be reprogrammed and will be compliant by June 1st of 2015, where they'll be setting an example for MLTS users everywhere. The biggest mistake that people make is they think that 911 is just a box. And while set it and forget it might work for some things, it's not applicable to 911 solutions. There are several companies out there that offer solutions for 911, and their methodologies widely differ. It's important to evaluate and understand the technology selection that you're making. And it's typically a very specific decision for each customer that's based on their specific needs. Unfortunately, 911 is a bit complex with many acronyms, and a lot of customers just don't know and cannot articulate what they actually need. This often causes them to underbuy, overbuy, or buy the wrong technology. And often, the problem remains unknowingly uncorrected. There are a lot of big questions that you may not have answers for. What does the law say about your company locations? What do you do about off-site and work-at-home users? What do you need to do to become compliant in each of your locations? What's the monthly recurring financial impact? Who can provide the solutions and why are they all different? You're going to quickly realize you're going to need some help with this. On May 15th of 2015, Texas Senate Bill 788 was signed into law by Governor Abbott as the first piece of legislation during his new term as governor. He was joined by Carrie's father and stepmother, as well as her nine-year-old daughter, who desperately tried to save her life but was unable to. SB 788 has four distinct sections. Section 1 gives recognition to the act as Carrie's law. Section 2 is really the meat and potatoes of the act, where it modifies and amends the Health and Safety Code, Chapter 771A, that deals with this problem. Section 3 defines when businesses need to become compliant, and Section 4 allows the act to take effect immediately if it receives a vote of two-thirds of all members elected to each house. So let's talk about Section 2. It states that a business service user shall configure their telephone system to allow a person to directly access 911 by dialing the digits 911 without an additional code, digit, prefix, postfix, or trunk access code. Now in the bill it defines 911 as the public safety answer point, which makes answering your own 911 calls or terminating the 911 call locally illegal. And obviously 911 has to be dialed directly or with the access code. The second statement in this section says that you have to configure the telephone system to provide a notification to a central location when a person within the facility dials 911 if the system is able to be configured to provide notification without an improvement to the system's hardware. Now, this basically says if you've got on-site notification, crisis alert, or whatever the feature is called in your system, you need to turn it on. And if you need to upgrade hardware, you're automatically granted a waiver. However, 
this doesn't specifically cover software upgrades. So that's something that you need to check with your local vendor. The next section details potential waivers. Each emergency communication district is able to grant a one-year waiver of these requirements to a specific business user if they can show that the requirements would be unduly and unreasonably cost prohibitive for the business user to comply with. And the business user needs to provide an affidavit no later than September 1st of each year that specifically states the manufacturer and model number of the telephone system that can't be remediated and that the business service user has made a good faith attempt to reprogram or replace the system. And additionally, the business user agrees to place an instructional sticker immediately adjacent to each telephone that's accessed using the non-compliant system, indicating that during the waiver period, the telephone is unable to directly dial 911 and provide instructions for accessing 911 in case of an emergency. And that sticker needs to be 16-point text, contrasting in color, and easy to read. Now, the act takes effect immediately if it receives two-thirds vote, and it passed the Senate on April 16th, 30 to 1, and passed the House on April 30th by a vote of 137 to 2, with one additional present but abstaining. For existing systems, business service users need to be compliant no later than September 1st, 2016. But as we said earlier, new systems going in place need to be compliant immediately. During a press conference in Marshall, Texas, one year after the incident, FCC Commissioner Ajit Pai, who has been a true champion to this cause, stated that we learned that this problem could be solved. MLTS vendors reported that every single one of their phone systems could be configured to allow for direct dialing of 911. And that's one of the primary reasons why this law has passed everywhere that it's been raised. There's one other issue that needs to be raised that's not covered in the legislation, but it's very important to understand, and that's 911 misdials. When you allow direct 911 dialing, you can create a problem where 911 misdial calls become a problem. This typically happens when users dial 9, 1, then pause, look at the number, and dial 1 plus the area code again, making international calls by forgetting the 0 when dialing 9011, or a variety of other reasons. Bottom line is, simple programming can fix this problem. In the legacy Nortel CS1000 systems, there's actually a 911 misdial prevention feature that can be easily turned on. In all other systems, whether they're Avaya or not, the easiest way to do this is by capturing calls to 911 plus additional digits. And then blocking those as most will be 911 missile attempts. When you program this, you need to be sure to flag all of these for on site notification and crisis alert so they can be investigated. In any case, you'll find out who your common abusers are and you'll be able to educate users so they're aware. And the rule is simple if you call 911 by mistake, stay on the line and tell the call taker it was a mistake. They'll probably have questions and you need to answer them honestly. And whatever you do, don't hang up. When you do that, you'll most always cause a dispatch to the site to find out what happened. And remember, not only does that take away resources from real crimes, it may cost you some money. Once again, the basic tenets behind Kerry's Law, direct access to emergency services, both with and without the trunk access code. On-site notification that alerts devices that an emergency call has occurred and the interception or termination of calls internally is prohibited. When you call 911, it has to reach 911. For more information on Avaya E911 Solutions, you can visit us on the web at www.avaya.com. I'm Mark Fletcher, Chief Architect for Public Safety Solutions at Avaya. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Fletch911, and you can check out my blogs and podcasts at avaya.com forward slash Fletcher.